The purpose of this video is to demonstrate proper techniques for making aseptic transfer of plant material. Successful control of contamination depends largely upon the operator's techniques in aseptic culture. In plant tissue culture, small pieces of plant tissue are placed on or in a medium rich in nutrients and sugar. If bacteria or fungi come in contact with the plant tissue or the medium, the culture becomes contaminated. The contaminants, bacteria and fungi, will use nutrients from the medium and quickly multiply and overwhelm the culture. Pathogenic contaminants will also destroy the plant tissue. Our aim is to surface sterilize the plant tissue and put it on a sterile growth medium without any bacteria or fungi getting on the plant or medium. This is not easy because bacteria and fungal spores are in the air, on us, in us, and under us. When you see sunlight shining in a window you can, from certain angles, see dust particles in the air. There are hundreds of bacteria attached to each dust particle. A horizontal laminar flow unit is designed to remove the particles from the air. Room air is pulled into the top, or bottom, of the unit and pushed through a high efficiency particulate air, or HEPA, filter with a uniform velocity of 90 feet per minute across the work surface. The air is filtered by the HEPA filter, so nothing larger than 0.2 micrometers can pass through. This renders the air sterile. The flow of air from the unit prevents fungal spores or bacteria from entering. All items going inside the unit should be sterile or sprayed with alcohol. If you cannot afford a laminar flow hood, a transfer cabinet can easily be built providing an enclosed environment that is not sterile but can be sterilized. A cardboard box lined with aluminum foil or plastic, or a well-cleaned aquarium, provides a shield to reduce contamination. A box that is 20 to 24 inches wide, 20 to 24 inches high, and 12 to 16 inches deep provides a good work area. Working inside any of these does not guarantee success. You should always be aware of potential sources of contamination such as dust, hair, hands, and clothes. All jewelry should be removed, hands washed, sleeves rolled up, and long hair tied back. Hands should be washed, not scrubbed, scrubbing dries hands and creates flakes of skin that have bacteria, and sprayed with 70% ethyl or isopropyl alcohol, or coated with isopropyl alcohol gel. Gloves and masks provide extra protection. Do not lean over the work area. Keep your back against the backrest of your chair. Try to work with your arms straight. This position may feel awkward, but it will reduce contamination. Talking or sneezing while culture material is exposed can also lead to contamination. Do not pass non-sterile items over sterile areas or items. Reach around rather than over. Make your movements smooth so that you do not disturb the air more than is necessary. Work quickly though, the longer it takes to manipulate the tissues, the greater the chance of contamination. Have only the necessary items in the sterile work area. Remove items that are no longer needed as quickly as possible. Think about each step before beginning so that you understand what you are about to do. Turn on your hood. Spray or wipe down the hood in transfer areas with 70% alcohol, approximately 30 minutes before starting to make transfers. A sterile work surface is needed on which to place the sterile tissue to trim it. A sterile petri dish is a convenient surface upon which to work. Glass petri dishes can be autoclaved and reused. Pre-sterilized plastic dishes are used and discarded. Spray the bag of dishes with 70% alcohol before you open it and place the desired number of unopened dishes at each station. Each dish has two sterile surfaces, the inside top and inside bottom. When transferring plant parts from one container to another, do not touch the inside edges of either vessel. By observing where contamination arises in a culture vessel, you may be able to determine the source of the contaminant. Check cultures every three to five days for contamination. Slimy areas mean bacterial contamination, while fuzzy areas are due to fungal contamination. Do not open containers that are contaminated. The contaminants could be harmful. The only safe way to dispose of these is to autoclave or pressure cook them for 15 minutes at 15 PSI. Contaminated plastic dishes can be placed inside a large can or autoclavable bag to be sterilized before discarding. 
To recap, one, always spray or wipe down the transfer area approximately 30 minutes prior to work. Two, always keep your face and head away from the cultures you are transferring. Remember that most contaminants are introduced through poor technique. Three, work with your hands in front of you. Avoid talking with others around you when making sterile transfers. Four, use a glass bead sterilizer or alcohol lamp to flame your transfer instruments between transfers. Remember to allow the instruments to cool between transfers. Five, keep your transfer area clean and uncluttered. Six, check your cultures every three to five days for contamination. Discard all contaminated cultures to prevent cross-contamination.